Come on, let's go. Come on. Give me the stick, stupid. Huh? Give me the stick. Ready? Ready? Go. Go get it. Oh, she's going to get it. You big dummy. You made your sister go get it. And then he takes the little part that breaks off. Man, that's cheap, lovey. Look at her. 13 years old, she's dragging that thing. <laughs> You're a good girl. Huh? All right. There's two happy dogs. Where are you going? Oh, now you're going to go in the water, huh? All right, well, just stop barking. I got a headache, okay? Yeah, he's pretending that he... He's pretending that he hasn't been standing here barking like a maniac. As soon as I press record, he shuts up. I should sell these phones as a way to shut toddlers up. We're hanging in overtime! We're hanging in overtime! We're hanging in overtime! Let's go, Panthers! Let's go, Panthers! Let's go, Panthers! Let's go! Panther fans, here we go. Finally, uh, the last of the four late games in a row. <sighs> Ready to end this road trip and get back to some normal 7 o'clock games. I ain't going to lie about that. So, we got the Flames tonight. Bubba is not in net. Stolars is in. I'm not going to complain about that. Even though last time when I complained, they did so well. People complained that I complained. <sighs> So I guess I'll just be positive and they better do well tonight. Um, I haven't had a chance to check on the lineup. I know they put Lundell on IR just because of the illness, but he'll still be eligible to come back in our next game. I, Sourdiff, I think, is up. Sourdiff, Sourdiff, right? Yeah, I think he's up. I don't know if he's in the lineup or night tonight. We'll find out. I don't trust what he says pregame anyway because you know Maurice. Um, they got the room bug. They wait for me to come in here and do the pregame, and then whatever I have suggested or said is going to happen, he immediately does the opposite. Now, in terms of this game, um, I'm feeling generous, okay? 5-2 Panthers. I haven't done a score prediction in a long time. The reason why I'm saying 5-2 Panthers is let Uyghur get one and let Huberto get one. I feel bad for Huberto. I don't feel bad for Uyghur, but I do feel bad for Huberto. I think he hasn't had a point since November 20th. Bra, we we can afford we can afford okay. In fact, ha, let him have a two point night, all right? Let Uyghur's goal be an on an, on an assist from Huberto. Huberto gets his own goal after after we've made it like five one or something like that. Everybody leaves the building. Well, we leave the building happy. Huberto gets a point, so we don't have to hear more bitching and complaining about how bad he is from the from the Flames fans. So, all right, Panthers. And two points. All right, so it's one, one after one. Lots of things happen in the, in the game, but I want to take a minute here for two things. Number one, um, link is in the description. The book is out, Lessons in Faith and Sports. I'm going to have a video out about it tomorrow. It is available for sale on Amazon, hardcover, dust jacket, all the details will be tomorrow. Um, Dana, good good friend of mine, Dana, good fan. She's been a fan of the channel since day one. She was the first member. And she sent Kyle and I a big box of stuff. We just opened it up on the stream. There's a lot of things I don't have time to show at all. But um, going up on the wall right now, we're going to find space together. It's the Ekblad mini bobblehead. Just to show that I have nothing against Ekblad. All right? Just to show... So I guess, um, well, you see, Ekblad was there. So now if I, now, Benny had been covering up Ekblad, and I kind of felt bad about that. So we'll have Ekblad cover up Ekblad, and then we'll put, we'll put Benny here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. The man cave sign. All right, I got the man cave sign. So can I put the man cave sign on top of the shark? That works. Okay, so then we put Bennett. We put Benny here. All right. Yeah, that should work, right? Yeah, this is a little crooked. Hold on a second. Let's get it symmetrical here. 
Okay, so there we go. We got the captain, we got the assistant captain, we got Benny, and we got the puppets. All right, thank you, Dana. And um, Panthers, 30 seconds left in the period to score a goal. And I thought it was Chucky, but it wasn't. It was Reinhardt with his 18th goal of the season. Bill Zito's going to have to have a part two to trying to figure out how to have his uh, Reinhardt negotiations going. All right, let's hit the second period. All right, so still 1-1 one, one after 1. Good game. Um, you wouldn't think so because of the score being only 1-1. One, one. Both teams have had significant chances. I can't praise the goaltender during the game, but let's just say Markstrom is playing well, and so is Stolarz. That's, that's as much as I can say right now. Um, we're having plenty of opportunities, man. I mean, Chucky can't buy a goal. It's like... He places himself right in the right spot, and it's just wherever the rebound is going, it's just going a foot too far this way or a foot too far that way. Um, we've given up a couple of grade A chances. It's a good game. Calgary obviously looks like, I don't know how they've played the rest of the year, but they don't look bad. I don't know if they've raised their level of play just to play against us. I haven't really noticed Huberto at all. He had one bad giveaway. Um, Uyghur... Haven't noticed them. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's been kind of choppy play, kind of back and forth. There's really not a whole lot to go on here. I have a feeling we're going to end up in overtime with this one because it started a half hour early. You see what I'm saying? The other game started at 10. This one started at 9.30. So probably going to have some extra hockey here. Uh, the other thing is, is, I forgot to mention this in the last period. I was talking about all the gifts that Dana gave. If you want to see everything that she gave, watch the first intermission of the live stream but this scarf and Kyle was really showing this scarf off and this is not one that I had now this is nice that side is nice but this side look at that I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not um but that's got the old the old leaping panther the sil I mean it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful I may never take this scarf off even in June so Hopefully, we're still playing in June. If we're playing in June, I will wear this scarf. or put it that way. All right, it's 1-1. So, you know, anything can happen here. Now, we'll be just fine to take the sucker, get the point, and then get two in overtime. All right. I'm not going to lie. Um... I'm 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 kind of disgusted by this one. Now, I understand that there's going to be some people that say, "Well, we won a couple of games on this trip, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. It's not the end of the world. The late games are over. I am happy that the late games are over for a little while. We have late games coming back January second. That's fine. Okay. I hate losing hockey games, so we'll just start there. The Flames are not a team that we should be losing to. The Flames are certainly not a team that we should be losing to in regulation. We should at least be getting a point out of this game. And then, to make matters worse, a shorty. A shorty. Now, we look nice against Edmonton, right? But three of the last four games, we have a combined one goal and no points. And Edmonton has been very up and down with their defense. Remember, uh, Tampa had scored seven against them basically a couple nights before we scored five. The bottom line is, the other three games, we scored one combined goal. Now, I saw the Matthew Kachuk quote today. He said something to the effect of he's not going to cheat to get some extra offense because he loves the culture that we're bring that we're that we're building here. Okay. All right. On the surface that sounds all fine, well and good, no questions asked. Okay. You you're not going to win a cup one to nothing. And it's not even likely you're going to win your playoff games all two to one. Now, I know what we did against Carolina and what we against Toronto last year. 
We also had to destroy our bodies to do it. Blocking shots, being extraordinarily physical. I have some ideas what I think would be the solutions partially to this offense, but I don't know that we have a coaching staff that will do it. Now, I've talked about this a couple times recently. I'm going to bring it up again. When Maurice showed up here in his initial press conference, he talked about not wanting to squash the creativity of the offense. Remember, we were coming off of that ridiculous offensive season with the President's Trophy, and he just wanted to add certain parts to the game. But what we're seeing out there tonight and in the other two games where we got shut out is we can't complete a two-on-one. We get a two-on-one, you know somehow, some way we're going to screw it up over and over and over again. What few two-on-ones we do get. Now, a couple of specific things I will say. I know Barkoff was asked on the power play tonight, but I'm, I'm not even going to venture that. Evan Rodriguez, as much as I like the player that he is for us five on five, does not belong on the power play. Tonight was at least the sixth, tenth, twelfth time on the power play where he gets the puck on one side of the ice and he's trying full on cross ice passes that are no that have no chance of getting completed and the puck is out of the zone going the other way. We have to score on our power play chances. It's one thing you're giving up the, the shorthanded goals. I mean, that's not really been our problem. I'm not, I'm not ignoring that that's what happened tonight, but our problem is not giving up shorthanded goals. Our problem is not scoring goals. That's our problem right now. I mean, we basically gave up two goals tonight, okay? And at no point in that third period that I... I mean, we got the rally caps, and we're trying, but I'm watching on the ice. I'm watching the product on the ice, and I'm saying, I don't see any jump. I don't see any energy. I don't see any of what we are used to from this team when they turn it on, and they're going to come back and get a goal or two and win a game. So none of that in any of the three games that we lost out of these last four. None of it. I had it's six minutes left, four minutes left, <coughs> three minutes left, and you're watching them, and they picked it up a little bit, but not enough, not enough. I mean, we couldn't match Calgary's intensity. What were they, 12, 14, and whatever before this game? I mean, with all due respect, they're like a meh middle of the pack team. We could not match their intensity. Now. Some might say, well, it's the end of a long road trip. Well, what about the second and the third game of the road trip? It wasn't the end then. It was the beginning of the road trip, and the effort was worse than what we saw tonight. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is over the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, but we got a couple of days off, I am going to do as deep of a dive as I can to be reasonable. I want to see exactly how things were going before Ekblad and Montour came back and how it's been since. Um, Montour's got his goal. He pretty much looks like himself from last year. We know Montour can have a tendency to try to do a little bit too much. Um, you know, we pulled the goalie. It's six on four. We had a ton of chances in front. We can't bury a freaking puck. And then Montour gets it at the line. And instead of maybe even... Hell, if you didn't have a clear pass, take it out of the zone and reset. But you, you don't try to risky cross-ice pass that gets intercepted. And then it's the empty net shorthanded. We were not making smart decisions with the puck tonight. We were definitely not making smart decisions with the puck. We are making stupid decisions with the puck to make up for the fact that we're really not playing with very much energy. We had energy against the Oilers. Or were the Oilers just bad? Because 
in the games that the Oilers have not been good, they've been bad. Okay? But the rest of these games, we have one goal in the three games. And that's just not, that's not acceptable for an NHL team. And there's so many multitudes of reasons, but one of the, one of the reasons is Larson, it should be Forsling and Larson. And this is not me bitching about Ekblad. <clears throat> Forget about Ekblad. Larson and Forsling was working. It was a really good top pair. Larson was scoring goals. The chemistry was there. And just because Aaron Ekblad comes back and he's the guy making the money and he's the draft pick and all of that stuff, we break up what was our top pair working. Shouldn't have happened. Should not have happened. I don't know what you do with the rest of the guys, but you start there because we were we were scoring more goals before these guys came. I think I think and I think the stats will will, will bear that out. I mean, oh God, this is this is a concern. This is a concern because Reinhardt's putting the puck in the back of the net. Barkov's getting his chances. Barkov is who Barkov is, okay? He's the best defensive forward in the game. He's probably a top 10, I don't know about top 5, but certainly top 10 center in the game. But he's he's got 39 goals once. For the most part, he's going to get you 30-ish goals. He's not going to be Connor McDavid, right? So he's going to get his goals. But he's not going to overkill it, okay? Verhage can't score all the goals, and Reinhardt can't score all the goals. We're getting nothing from anybody else, all right? And and back to Kachuk's comment about not wanting to cheat to get a little bit of extra offense because of the culture. Well, I I I hear what you're saying, Chucky, but we need goals doing hockey games. We win. We 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 need goals. Somebody's got to put the puck in the back of the net. And, you know, I mean, we, we could talk about if we're going to add a guy at the deadline or whatever like that. One guy ain't coming to save us. Not with the number of guys not scoring. Not with the number of guys just not getting. I mean, Bennett got one the other night, but he's not a big goal scorer. Okay? Kachuk's not scoring. Lusterine and Lundell, when he's in the lineup, is not scoring. Rodriguez, every once in a while. Every once in a while. And then the fourth line has just been, I mean, Lomberg doesn't have anything going on. Lorenz was asked tonight. Cousins, we know his limitations as it is. Okay? And then when you're not getting the secondary scoring from your defense, we were getting it from Larson and Mikola. Ekblad Montour come in. We give them their roles back, and we can't score. We can't score goals. And I don't really know what the answer is. I mean, Marie, any of the suggestions, answers that I would have or you would have or mostly any of us would have, Maurice ain't going to do it anyway. It's not going to do it anyway. I've talked about wanting to put Lundell up there with Barkoff trying to get something going because I think Stenlin would be good at 3C, but you know, he ain't scoring either. You know, he was scoring at, at he, he had six goals quickly there at 4C. But I, when, you, when you have that many guys not scoring, Maurice is going to have to figure some way to allow them to have some offensive creativity within the ridiculous structure of this system. And I know that that's a fine edge because we're only giving up two goals a game. But if we're losing three out of four while giving up two goals a game, I know the other games were four, okay? I'm speaking theoretically. It wouldn't have mattered for two. We're getting nothing, right? So somehow, some way, he is going to have to, he has this, laissez-faire, lackadaisical attitude towards the towards scoring. And you, you've seen Kachuk today talking about it. 
And on one hand, you want to you want to give Chucky all the props for talking about the culture and all of that. What do you mean you're not going to cheat to get extra offense? I mean, what exactly does that mean? You have five goals in 31 games. That's 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 absurd. Something's got to change, man. I, I, I know Maurice's system. We, we, we saw it in the playoffs. And if you're going to play that style in the playoffs, that's one thing. But last thing I'll say is, what's going to happen when the other teams start playing tougher on defense? <coughs> Excuse me. What's going to happen those last 30 games of the season when all the other teams were playing or dying for points in a playoff spot and they tighten down on defense? Well, we're already not scoring any goals. We're going to get negative, right? It's not working. It's not working. I mean, I know that we're still second, third place, but this was this was garbage. This trip, I'm sorry. This this was garbage. We beat an Oilers team that let's face it, they were bad. Okay? They were bad. They had a winning streak. Then they lost seven to four to Tampa. And then we kicked their ass because their defense sucks. And their goalie may as well just be some schmuck off the street. They Picard putting them in against us. It's not, it's not NHL goaltending, okay? So let's not pretend like those five we gave, we got against Edmonton were some big. Did, did what we saw tonight on the ice, and what we saw the other two nights when we got shut out. That is much more indicative. Indicative. That's much more of an example of what our offense is most nights than the five. And it's not going to be good enough. It's not going to be good enough. And there ain't no guarantees about making playoffs. Okay, you, You've got to score goals. Great defense is fine. Goaltending, I mean, on one hand, we gave up two goals, so it's hard to blame Stolarz. you got to give the guy some goal support. On the other hand, both goals were really kind of weak. Okay, I know it was a shorthanded breakaway, but somehow... He managed to be on his knees with his glove hand up. He doesn't move, and he gets beat glove side. That's hard to do, but he did it. And then the first goal was just, it went right through him. Like, like, like I think it literally transmogrified through him. So, but if he, if he gives up two weak goals, and that's all he gives up, he made some nice saves, we should win the game, right? I mean, we should win that game 4-2. Stolarz gave up a couple weak goals, but it's still two. It's not like he gave up five and two of them were weak. It was still two. So, oh, I'm disgusted. I don't like losing games. You lose here, you lose one, you did that, whatever. But this is a problem now. This is a problem, and it's been, it's been creeping. The offense was just good enough. And then Ekblad and Montour have come back, and it just destroyed. And it's not their fault. It's 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 not what they bring that has screwed things up. It's what they changed. We we had a good thing going. We had a really good thing going. Guys knew their roles. You notice all of a sudden Mikula is not really trying to be offensive anymore, right? Larson is buried on the bottom freaking pair tonight. It's not good. Maurice is going to have to you know uh, at the very least. Again, this guy nothing to do with Ekblad's play, but the way Forsling and Larson was playing, he should have just left it alone and put Ekblad on the bottom pair and screw his ego. Even 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 with even with his bobblehead right here, I don't care about that. I went and went hockey games. We should not have screwed up that top pair, just for starters. Damn it. That's not the only thing though. I mean, Anton Lundell has what like a goal. Right, Chucky? I mean, Chuck, come on, dude. I'm talking about cheating for offense. Score some fucking goals. All right? You, you, you actually don't even have that many assists at this point. He's on pace for like, I think I figured it out today, he's on pace for like 60 points. I mean, come on. All right? You, 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 you're you making excuses. I don't want to cheat for offense because of the culture. What the hell does that even mean? Right? You're going to turn into bark off now? Come on. We, we got you for a reason. Okay? 
They did enough. This is 31 games now, five goals. This is not good enough. Yeah, you kind of look like yourself, but you really kind of don't. You're not playing physical out there, okay? All right? You're not playing physical. You're not scoring. What the hell else did we get you for? All right? We, we, we didn't get you to be a cheerleader. Come on, man. Enough is enough. Put the puck in the back of the net. Start knocking some bodies around. It's game 30. If your body can't hack it, then, you know, tell somebody. And maybe we'll sit you down for that. Seriously, enough is enough. When I heard that quote, it all looks good in sunshine and rainbows. And then you see what goes on the ice tonight. And you're like, we're losing to Calgary, man. We didn't even score with one goal. One. It's not good enough. Not good enough. I, I can't think of anybody other than Reinhardt for Hagee on the forward end of it. That's, that's been good enough. Where the hell's Ryan Lomberg? I mean, Lomberg's usually good for, you know, some excitement, a goal here or there, energy, effort. Well, where the hell is he? And it's a contract year for him, too, by the way, Ryan. All right? <coughs> you know, Sam Eskevich and Sordiff wouldn't mind playing on the fourth line, even though Maurice said he'll never play him on the fourth line because they're not fourth line guys. Kind of decides the point, right? Which I don't know if... If if sort of couldn't get into the game or whatever, I mean, like like, like did, could he not get into Canada? Was he not there? Because we called him up and then we still played uh, Lockwood, who's kind of a, you know, he's just the guy. The, the whole fourth line right now has been a waste of space the last couple of games. Laurent saying it. So we got issues, and and my concern, my aggravation, is. I don't think Maurice will feel the same way. I don't think Maurice is going to feel the same way. I think he'll just be like, well, the goals will come, you know. And maybe he's right. Maybe, right? I mean, we've seen how last year turned out, but we, this is this is not good. Losing three of the last four with one combined goal in those games, there's no, you can't paint me a pretty picture about that. All right, that's enough. That's enough. I want to get this up and get this wrapped up and go to bed. Um, I'm glad this late road trip is over. We got a couple of nights off. We better kick some ass on this homestand. And we, it is not an easy homestand. You know, we got the Blues. I think it's Blues um, Knights Rangers or Blues Rangers Knights. But I, I, I think that's it off the top of my head. So, yeah, good luck to us. We better score some freaking goals. All right, we ain't beating Vegas 2-1. to one. We sure as hell ain't going to beat the Rangers 2-1. to one. Now watch us win both games 2-1. to one. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't care. we got to get some goals. This, this, this is not okay. I just can't say that enough. This, this is not okay. Damn it. No points. Losing road trip. We lose three to the last four. We scored a goal combined in the three games. Stu and I see you in the morning. That should be that should be fun. It should be good. We'll be live for the members, Patreon supporters, eight o'clock, bright and early this morning. I'll see you then.